Second Kings chapter number two. It's an awesome story, the story of Elijah being uh, taken up into heaven, but I'm not preaching on Elijah. Keep your eye on Elisha. Second Kings chapter number two, beginning in verse number one, the Bible says, and it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Terry, here I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will uh, take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yeah, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth and as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together, and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass that when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Israel, of Elijah? He said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets, which were uh, to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. I just want to preach a simple, quick message on this thought. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. Please bless now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can be seated. You know, we talk about wanting the blessings of God. And can I tell you the blessings of God are available? But how bad do you want them? We talk about wanting spiritual victory. And the victory is available. But how bad do you want it? We talk about wanting to have the power of God on our lives. We want to see God do something wonderful for our family, for our church, in our own lives. We want to be used of God in a powerful, meaningful way. But how bad do you want it? There's too much talk and not enough action. There's too much talk and not enough faithfulness. There's too much talking about it and thinking about it, and not enough just popping the clutch, burying the gas pedal as deep as it'll go, and just hanging on for the ride. 
I'm telling you, man. I think God's just looking for some people who want it bad enough. Not want what somebody else has, but what God has specifically for you. I don't even want what God has for you. I, I'm excited for what God has for you, and you may get to do 10 times more than I ever do, but I want everything that God has for me. I want everything that God has for me. I ain't trying to steal from nobody. I ain't fitting to jump in line. I just want to stay in my own lane, plug in, and, and just keep, keep going. Just keep going. I'm a plotter. I'm not a sprinter. You can tell by my body. I'm no sprinter. But I, I'm that, you know, in the tortoise and the hare, I'm, I'm the tortoise, man. And I just, you just keep moving. Just keep going. Keep going as far as you can, as long as you can. When you feel like it, when you don't feel like it, just keep going. I want God to do something in my life. I want God to use me. I'm already surprised that God's used me as much as he has over these, these last 20 years since he called me. I, wow. If that was the end of it, that'd be fine. But if it ain't over, then it ain't over. I want to stay plugged in. I, I want to keep going. I want to keep doing some things. But, but we can see a few ideas here in, in this chapter. I'll tell you, four, we're going to have four ways, four points. I hope I don't die on the fourth one. If I do, I'm good. Just heard about a preacher dying in his fourth point. Look what it says. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry ye here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And you know, Elisha couldn't be shook off. Elijah was like, hey, just stay here. You stay here. I'm going to Bethel. I'm going over, over to Jericho. I'm heading to Jordan. And Elisha's like, as, as the Lord liveth and as I so liveth, you ain't finna leave me behind. And he stuck with him. You know what he was? He was faithful. He was just faithful. He was faithful when he had a chance to quit. You know, I always worry when somebody gets sick, when somebody has that health event. People, when they get a little bit older, uh, you know, they, they, they get the, the little health stumbles. They get some bad news from their doctor. They got to change medication. They're a little dizzy. They're a little weak. They're a little this and that. And I always think, is this going to be the turn? Is this the time? Is this going to be the time that, that they can't come back? Is this, is this where they uh, uh, have to quit? Is this where they just have to get off that place and they can't do what they used to do anymore? Is, that the, is this the time? Is this going to be it? And I always pray, Lord, if it be thy will, just, just give them a little more time. Just give them, give them some more time. Man, because, Lord, this one knocks on doors. This one uh, writes letters, encourages missionaries. This one's doing extra stuff to give money to missions. Hey, Lord, this one witnesses to people. This one leaves a gospel track everywhere. They're just like, man, we got stuff all over the place because of this one. Lord, bless this one. Lord, that one's an encourager. I don't want them to get down in their health and not be able to encourage their preacher and, and fellow Christians, church members anymore. Lord, give them a little more time. I'm telling you, God blesses faithful people. If we want to see God do something big in our life, it's not like there's a lot of traffic from people trying to get things done for the Lord. Now, there's plenty of traffic, people trying to get to work, people trying to self-serve, people trying to one-up one another and all that. But listen, when it comes to believers just trying to bear down and do something for the Lord, it's not a lot of traffic. So just stay in your lane and be faithful. I believe God's going to help us to be faithful. And, and be more than just being faithful right now, because a lot of people are like, well, I used to do this, I used to... Nah, be consistent. Be consistent. There in verses 3 through 6... It didn't matter where he went. He, he, he could have given up at Bethel and said, all right, boss, I'm going to stay here. Love you, man. Hey, it's been real good. Here the Lord's taking you up today. I'm going to stay here with these guys. They called it. He didn't do that. From Bethel to Jericho, from Jericho to Jordan. And, and, and no matter where he went, no matter where he went, he just stayed faithful. He just stayed with him. He was consistent. You know, there's just something about consistency. Your consistency becomes your testimony. If you're consistently sorry, that's your testimony. If you're consistently faithful, that's your testimony. If you're consistently funny, that's your testimony. I have a weird sense of humor, so a lot of times when I go somewhere to preach, I may have a serious as a heart attack message. And you can almost see people like, is he going to say something funny? 
Are you going to say something funny? And, you know, okay, so I'm a goofball. I'm probably going to say something funny. I don't write jokes. I don't tell jokes. I'm horrible at telling jokes. I can blow a punchline. But my brain goes in weird places, and I don't know, God uses that to keep people's attention sometimes or whatever. But be consistent. Be who, who God wants you to be. Not just be who you are, because if you're sorry, that ain't helping nobody. But be consistently faithful and consistently faithful so that you can be who God wants you to be. So be consistent there in verses 3 through 6. All the way down. He just kept going. Man, we're going. We're, we're, we're there. We're going to stay there. We're going to keep going together. And they too went on. The reason they too went on, he didn't get left behind because he had been faithful all that time. By the way, when others are telling you to do otherwise. Every time he went somewhere. I think the, the, those sons of the prophets in Bethel were like, hey, you know he's leaving. You can just stay here. Hey, man, you made it all the way from Bethel. Welcome to Jericho. Hey, you know God's going to take him today. Why don't you just stay here? See, he had a chance, but had he taken that chance, he could have been top dog in Jericho. He could have been top dog in, in Bethel. But he had missed the blessing. He had missed the big blessing. He never would have got to see what he saw. He never would have had the mantle. He never would have had the power. And by the way, God answered his prayer because he ended up getting he ended up doing twice as many miracles as Elijah. You just go through and count them. So be faithful. Be consistent. And thirdly, don't be afraid to ask for what you want. Don't be afraid to ask what you want. Look at look at verse 7. 50 men standing around doing nothing. And they get down to verse 8. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together. And they go across on the water. And it came to pass in verse number 9. When they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I, want, ask what I shall do for thee before I'm taken up from thee. And he said, I pray, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. You go, oh, he said, even Elijah was freaked out. Even Elijah was like, Whoa! Couldn't you just like ask for my shoes? Couldn't you maybe just ask for my, the, the, the scripts that I had written? Couldn't you just ask for my position in teaching? You ask a hard thing. And I like that Elijah didn't leave it up to himself. Nevertheless. If you see me when I go, it's done. Now if you don't see me, no, then no go. Don't be afraid to ask what you want. Don't be afraid to ask God your heart's desire. He'll never answer the prayers you refuse to pray. Don't be afraid to ask for God to bless you, to bless your family. Now listen, Elisha wasn't asking, I need a double portion of your power so I could be the number one man. Is that what he was saying? Listen, those miracles were used to help a lot of people. They were using, they were helping people by helping people. They were helping people by killing bad guys. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. It wasn't a selfish thing. But don't be ashamed to ask God for what you want. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. I have been shocked at some of the things that we've asked over the years. You know, where you're just like, Psh, okay, how about this? And then you're like, really? I wasn't even expecting it. We ought to ask expecting. And I've learned to ask expecting. But I'm telling you, don't be afraid to ask. And finally, number four, keep your eyes on what God is doing. Beginning there, verse, verse number 11. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked, and behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and they parted them both asunder, and, 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 and it happens. And you know, I just think that had, had Elisha said, uh, I'll catch up with you, I've got to go check my messages. I've got to go check my emails. I've got to go update my status. I've got to twit out to all the twits, and I've got you know, to go do something. Tweet to the twits or whatever, however it's done. And uh, you've got to update his Facebooks and all that. Now, I just think that if he had gone back over and been like, 
Go, gone back to those 50 standing by, by Jordan and been yelling and commiserating with them. He might have missed what happened. But see, he was faithful. He was consistent. And he had asked God for something. So because he had asked God for something, he was watching to see if it was going to happen. And as it happened, he didn't want to miss a thing. One of my greatest fears in my life has always been I'm going to miss something. As a little kid, man, my aunts and uncles would come over and they're like, all right, it's bedtime. Everybody's about to leave. Bunch of liars. Wasn't nobody leaving. They're about to play cards and sit up and cackle and laugh all night. I wanted to be in on the fun. So I'd hide in the hallway. I'd get, I, got, I can't tell you how many times I got busted falling asleep in the hallway. Somebody would be going to the bathroom. David Earl, what are you doing out here? I'm like, oh, what happened? I must have fell out of bed and rolled down the hall. I don't know. And, you know. But I just didn't want to miss out if something was good was going on. I'm always afraid I'm going to leave that area where all of our works are tried by fire. And man, I, listen, I, I've been, done my best to be faithful over the years. So I get it. I mean, there'll probably be a lot of reward, I hope. So I'm, I'm, you know, maybe get a trailer or something. I don't know. And leave on my reward and look over and there's a big pile. It's like a recurring nightmare. And I'm like, what? what what's with the pile? Way more than what I had. That's all the stuff I could have had. Eternity is going to be a long time. And I'll be in heaven with God. But I don't want to spend eternity looking at a pile of stuff I could have had when I could have had it. Don't you want the blessings of God? Don't you want God to do something better with your kids than He's done with you? Don't you want your grandkids to go further than you've gone? Well, how bad do you want it? Do you want the rewards that God has for you in heaven? How bad do you want it? Do you want to be found faithful? Well, we love reading that verse. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Hey, that doesn't happen unless you've done well and you've been good and you've been a faithful and you've been a servant. See, we all want the accolades. But how bad do you want it? You can't sit on the bench and expect to be an MVP. Come off the bench. Get in the game. You say, man, you could get hurt. Oh, you are going to get hurt. There's no way to get out of it without being hurt. Just lower your shoulder. Keep heading the direction you're supposed to go. Have on that whole armor of God. and Just keep doing what he wants you to do. We all want to be blessed. But the question is, how bad do you want it? Let's all stand. I appreciate our preachers preaching. Three messages, kind of rapid fire right there in a row. Surely God spoke to your heart. If God didn't speak to your heart, I'd be the first one down here praying. If you didn't, if the Holy Spirit of God didn't speak to you, I just wonder if there was a broken connection somewhere. If God's speaking to your heart, why don't you ask yourself, how bad do I really want it? And why don't you deal with God? on those terms. Father, we love you. We thank you for the day. And Lord, I just pray that you would bless this time of invitation. Three rapid fire messages. Really all kind of in line. About getting right, staying right, being faithful, just serving, just serving. Help us to live our lives realizing that we will live with the consequences for all eternity. Lord, we love you, and we thank you in Jesus' name with thanksgiving.